Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Utah State pre-tournament press availability. We are joined today by head coach Craig Smith. Craig and the Aggies, as you can see by his shirt, are back-to-back -back tournament champions in the Mountain West. Um, and uh, so we will uh, go ahead with availability. Reminder, please use the raise hand function um, on the Zoom. And then this uh, availability will be uploaded to the Pentagon YouTube channel uh, shortly after the conclusion. So if you missed it, certainly you can go pull clips from there. Uh, Utah State opens the event tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. on ESPN2 against the newest tournament newcomer, VCU. So I'm sure Coach will have things to say about that. With that, we'll open it up for questions. Please raise your hand via Zoom. And don't forget to hit that, hit that mute button. <laughs> we've, all, we've all become experts. <clears throat> Looks like our first question comes from Sean Bauer of Kelloland Media Group. Hey, Craig, how's it going? Sean, how are you? Doing well, man. Uh, uh, back in South Dakota, a place you're uh, familiar with. Uh, just thoughts on, you know, getting back here to Sioux Falls, back to the Pentagon. <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, professionally and as our team, we are thrilled to be here. I think this is a fantastic event. Um, I'll get more into that in a little while. Personally, it's a great feeling being back. You know, when, when um, we made the announcement a couple weeks ago, and I think it was Dayton that left the tournament, uh, it was amazing the, the number of texts from uh, longtime friends from our four years. We had an amazing four years here, my wife and our four kids. Um, uh, but to hear from some people that you do hear from, you know, a few times a year and then some that we hadn't heard from for a while on both sides, right? And that's how it goes sometimes. And, and just landing last night and, you know, you're just kind of looking around and you just get a good feeling. And, you know, um, the way they're doing things here, man, it, it's incredible the, the way this tournament is wired, so to speak. And, you know, we, we, we land, we get on the bus and uh, we get to the hotel and then we go test immediately and and you see a usd grad you know doing the swab thing and they went a little bit farther up uh i was glad i got the usd grad i don't think he went quite as far but a couple of those other grads you know went a couple centimeters a little bit too far maybe a couple centimeters doesn't seem too much but with the swab up the nose it is a lot um, um but just bump elbows with people I haven't seen for quite a while. Pulseville, obviously, we've known for a long time, seeing you, Terry, again. And um, it's, a, it's a great feeling. And, you know, on a side note, when this all happened, my wife and our four kids, my wife and my oldest son now, Landon, is a sophomore at Utah State. My wife, Landon, and my daughter, our youngest, we're going to drive here. And then my two middle boys, Brady and Carson, had their first practice today and they were going to fly in tomorrow night land at 7 30 and then they were going to drive back but with the cancellation of the the fans which is obviously we all understand um so they uh won't make the trip although my oldest and my second boy i think are still going to drive out here for thanksgiving and spend some time with their friends in vermilion so uh it's been exciting now hopefully we can win some games <clears throat> Hey, Terry, can you hear me down there? Yep. Go ahead. All right. All right. The uh, question, question from the uh, uh, on site media room. <clears throat> yeah, next question is from Julie. Hey, Coach. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Hey, Julie, how are you? I'm doing well. I am testing the limits of technology because I'm calling you from a car. So we'll see how it goes. Um, well, if there's a will, there's a way. I know you'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm going to try. Uh, well, what do you, you know, you just found out you're playing VCU. How do you prepare for them in such a short uh, turnaround? quickly um you know to no fault you know it, it's just we all know what we're navigating like it literally right before this interview um on the bus ride here just looking at twitter and and i think florida state canceled their 
their first game. So we know it's gone on and on, and we know how things are going. And, um, you know, you just – it's just the time, sign of the times this year. And it's easy to say, woe is me, or feel sorry for yourselves. But this is reality. And this is going to be reality this year. And so you can't sit there – and complain or whine you got to make the best of the situation our guy you know it's been eight months since we cut down the nets on march 7th 2020 uh where we beat the number five team in the country and we're celebrating back to back uh we're going to the ncaa tournament we think we got a team that's really can play with anybody and beat anybody um and and so since that time there's been a lot of just unknowns, right? You have the quarantine. We didn't know for a long time if four of our guys were going to be able to get back into to the country. Uh, we have seven guys from uh, over from different countries, and so there's been so many unknowns that these student athletes have been dealing with, um, not knowing if they're going to have non-conference play, not knowing if they're going to have a season for a while, um, going through the testing, which we all understand, but you know. The, when, when you go through that testing, and there's some anticipation and some nerves and some anxiety. Um, man, am I going to test positive? Am I going to have to sit out for 10 days? Uh, then my roommate's going to have to sit out 14 days? Or am I going to be negative and I get to play? And, you know, and, and I feel the same way. Like, I'm on my own self-quarantine, right, where I'm not doing a whole lot because I want to coach. I want to be around our guys every day. And so we just feel very fortunate that we get to play in this event. We're so pumped up when this opportunity happened <clears throat> or when the opening happened, um, we called Lee Miller right away with complete sports management. We know that she has such a great reputation of running first class events. And so when they gave us the thumbs up to be a participant in this event, we were thrilled. Because we, we, not only because of their reputation and her reputation, but then you combine that with coming back to playing the Pentagon. And of course, my four years at South Dakota, we had played uh, one, two, five games here. And almost every weekend, I'd see my kids play in the Pentagon on these surrounding courts. I never let them play on the main court. I guess I got to get better. But, uh, um, and so we know the world-class venue that this place is. We knew the tremendous hospitality uh, that was going to be provided here. And the biggest thing then was just to find out the plan. And, you know, I, I, you know, I know the COVID rates are high in South Dakota right now, percentage-wise, but from the get-go with finding out the plan, we felt so safe and secure. We literally flew in on a, on a jet, walked onto the bus 20 feet from the, from the plane, went right to the hotel. The hotel is closed to, to every single person except for the eight teams and their travel party. So it's, it's essentially a bubble without the quarantine, but everybody gets tested right away. Nobody's allowed to leave the hotel unless you're coming to the arena. And, and, and now we're at the arena. So it, it really is a bubble. And then you have Sanford Health who's a pioneer in, in the health industry, you know, doing what they do. And so we felt super safe. If you look at the arena, there's plexiglass all around. The seats are socially distanced. And obviously now there's no fans in the arena. So we were thrilled. Yeah, it's different. I can't say my 25 years we've landed and found out that we're, hey, Jesse, and found out that we're playing uh, a different opponent. We just had a late night last night watching a lot of film. VCU is very, very good. Um, um, there are some similarities to Wichita State. I mean, obviously, personnel is different, some of their scheme, um, but there are some similarities. So you just got to make – we have a, a phrase in our program called NBA, and when we say that, it's not NAS National Basketball Association. It's next best action, and the next best action is to be prepared for uh, VCU. When did you find out, Coach? <laughs> Am I muted, Chad? <clears throat> okay. Uh, we, we did have a question from uh, 1069, the fan. If that uh, media member is still there, we can have you go next. Hey, Coach. RJ Salveson, how are you? I bet these South Dakota reporters miss all of these long answers. Oh, hey, RJ. How are you? <laughs> uh, Coach, Jay Billis had Justin Bean on his underrated, underappreciated list in a group of about 35 players from around the country. His rise started with you. Can I ask you, what was it like to see him grow up so far from two years ago to where he is now, and what, you, what has impressed you most about Justin Bean? 
Uh, Ajay, you're really cutting in and out. Sorry, Coach, you got me? Hey, Ajay, if, Ajay, if you could do us a favor, why don't you type that question in the chat function? I will read it to Coach. You were cutting in and out a little bit with the audio. Uh, and we'll come back to that question in the meantime. Uh, we will go to uh, whoever's next. Apologies for that, Ajay. Julie, did you have a question? I just had a, a follow-up question. Go which ahead, was Austin. Julie, Julie, apologize again. Same, same thing there. If you guys could put it in the chat, um, we seem to be having a little bit of a connection issue. If you want to just type that in the chat, uh, I will do my best. I won't do any impersonations. I will read it very matter of factly, uh, and uh, we'll get your question to Craig again. Apologies for that. A follow-up question from Julie for Coach. Uh, when did you find out you'd be playing VCU tomorrow night? So we, we did our, our normal um, routine when you play. Well, of course, with this tournament, we needed to be here two days ahead of time to test um, right, after, right after we got off for playing. So my understanding, you know, we, we practiced yesterday in, at Utah State and uh, prepared for Wichita State, of course, and, um, you know, did our deal, showered up, did our, uh, our routine with the media, got on a plane. We literally landed, and, um, and it was on Twitter. And so one of our assistants, Eric Peterson, saw it on Twitter, and that's no fault of anybody's, right? That's just how – that's the world we live in. And um, got on the bus, and um, Michelle, our host that's which is with us all week, I had just read uh, uh, Eric Peterson, our assistant, saw that VCU was replacing somebody – what, didn't know who yet. I literally read it. Michelle met me immediately on the bus and said, hey, this is the circumstance. You know, Wichita State had a couple players test positive. And what people maybe forget is, <clears throat> so there's two student athletes that test positive. But, you know, a lot of men's basketball players, women's basketball players, football players, student athletes, they live with their teammates. So if, if two guys – test positive and they live separately and let's say they just live with one other roommate then those two guys have to because of direct contact tracing direct contact tracing they got to be out for 14 days so that's that's at a minimum for their guys I don't know the whole story obviously um, so she let us know and you just kind of look at each other like is this a done deal you know and now VCU's got to fly in here and you know we still had to pass our you know tests and now and they got to do theirs and so it was quick certainly but we have a fantastic staff um, we feel as prepared as we can be on a short notice the hard part is we have a young team we, you know we have nine guys out of our 16 that have never played a second for Utah State basketball seven true freshmen eight freshmen overall Liam McChesney registered last year and then Marco Anthony's a transfer from Virginia so so it is a little different we've had to be a little more methodical a little slower and didn't have our summer. We only had three weeks versus the eight weeks. And then it hasn't been consistent, right? Sometimes we've had to be out for 10 days. Sometimes, so it's been off and on. So we've really had to look in the mirror as a coaching staff. There's some things that we've had to adjust and adapt to and not quite do things how we exactly do them typically. But that's just how it is. You know, you can sit there and whine and pout about it. Um, but our guys have really dove in. We love our we, – we really like our team. But we are inexperienced, in particular, in the backcourt. And we did get the question from uh, Ajay here. Ajay's question for Coach, Justin Bean was put on an underrated, underappreciated list of 35 players in the country. His rise started with you. And I want to know what's impressed you most uh, when he started getting heavy minutes midway through your first year at Utah State to now. Well, Justin is a gym rat. I mean, that dude loves the gym. And – um, 
he's constantly trying to better himself. So a big emphasis this year was this summer was shooting and ball handling and decision making. Right. And he, and he's become even more athletic. He's already really athletic, um, especially vertically and running. And he's become even more of a greyhound, his fitness level. He's really streamlined his body and he's become quicker, um, quicker to the ball. He's making way better decisions. He's shooting it at a high level. You know, when we got hired two years ago, he, he was a walk on. And we don't ever look at guys as like walk ons and Scott, we don't ever refer to that. Um, we had 11 guys and we were playing all 11 consistently our first year for a while. The guy with the least minutes at that time was Justin Bean. And, you know, at this time of year, just like this year, you start playing all these games early on. You don't have a lot of practice time once you start playing. And once we got to December, um, where we just could settle in and get some more real practice time and preparation, Justin Bean was on the scout, the scout team. And, man, literally almost every day I would go home and I would just be like, why are we not playing this kid, right? Like every day he's just giving it to our – are two guys that are ahead of him as our power forwards. And um, you just, he just pops off. He just pops off the charts the way he rebounds. He was one of very few guys that he averaged a double double last year, you know, at six, 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 seven. That's hard to do. He's got a relentless motor. And then by the end of his freshman year, of course, we put him on scholarship at the semester break. Uh, and at the end of the year, he was on the floor in closing time. Um, we just had to live through some of those freshman mistakes because he was a little bit behind, you know, having never played, and he wasn't playing a lot early. So but he's had a great summer. Uh, I think people are going to be surprised at the changes that he's made while still having that Gator mentality of being a super tough guy. Sure. Last question. I assume it's a little facetious, but we'll allow it uh, from Tyler Well, uh, today it, de it depends on if today started at midnight last night or if it started when I woke up this morning <laughs> because it was a late night and early morning. These black eyes, uh, uh, I guess most people are used to that. It's kind of my signature, I guess. The black eyes look like I'm, you know, uh, been in a boxing match for a long time. I will say, though, one thing I've – another positive about being back in South Dakota is – Man, I'm like, I, got a, I got a quick workout in. I had to run off some stress before this deal. And uh, I usually run about three miles a day. It's a little bit harder at LT. You know, when you're running at 5,000 feet versus whatever Sioux Falls is, 700 feet, man, at three miles, I could have ran forever running at, uh, at sea level. So, um, but uh, it's, been, it's too high to count, Tyler. I'll just leave it at that. Perfect. Big thanks to Coach Smith. Good luck to the Aggies. Thank you guys for joining. And reminder, we will have this on our YouTube channel shortly. All right. Thanks, Terry. Go Aggies.